All right, here we go. Hey, Mind Pump listeners, would you like a free program to develop an amazing six-pack? We are giving away our No BS six-pack formula to a person who leaves a comment in the first 24 hours of this dropping, and we have to pick your comment. So make it a great comment. In fact, talk about why uh, one, of our, one of us is your favorite host. It probably should be me, but anyway, tell us why one of us is your favorite host. Give us a good reason, and uh, we'll pick your comment, and then you'll get free access to the No BS Six Pack Formula. Also, subscribe to this channel, turn on the notifications, because you gotta know when we post these videos, otherwise you'll miss out on all these amazing giveaways. Also, uh, before we start the episode, huge promotion, MAPS Aesthetic is 50% off, and our Extreme Fitness Bundle is 50% off. So they're both half off right now, so it's a huge promotion, all month long, month of May. Go check them out, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code May Special with no space, for that discount. All right, enjoy the podcast. Why you look so dark, Adam? I was in the sun like crazy this weekend. Look at you, you look all Yeah, I was I was you look uh, all tanned. Justin and I were talking outside uh outside the studio about God, yeah, I, I got I, a ton. My uh You can't tell. You got more freckles. Yeah. That's all it is. You got some color. I see a couple skin yeah, cancers. Yeah. And you actually don't look red. You I mean, you're like my my best friend. He's either white or red. He doesn't have like yeah. a, a color. I tried not to get red. That was like my whole goal. So what is the secret though? Do you have to use like a like fifty strength SPF stuff? Sure. Yeah, I go fifty and I kind of grade it down based off of like how many times I've been going to the beach or wherever else I'm going. Like yeah, like I eventually I tan. It takes the whole summer. Yeah, you know, but uh, by that point, I, I'm over it. Do you use uh, the zinc oxide or the titanium oxide one? I, I'm not a dork. You know? Bro, but, that's the but one you I, get. I, I know. I, I use it on my face. Like, I, I was using some you're of gonna that get, on my nose. You're going to get estrogen and no, shit, if bro. You use that, if you use that, won't that, like, reflect and block the sun? You don't get any tan the, Okay, there's two types of, uh, of, what are they called, sunblock or whatever, or, you know, protectant. You I didn't have my nerdy friend around. I didn't yeah. know. So yeah. the, the zinc oxide or titanium oxide ones yeah. are the ones that reflect the way. And yeah. then the chemical-based ones, are they absorb and scatter the UV rays. Now, the problem with the chemical-based ones is those are all – like xenoestrogenic, yeah, weird chemicals. Yeah, my nipples were hurting a little. So yeah, they do. That might be it. Yeah, they do weird things to you, dude. <laughs> All right, yeah. that explains a lot. Yeah. The other stuff, although it makes you a little bit white, because now they make it so that you get a little bit of white sheen, mm. but it doesn't like. It's not like in the movies. Yeah, I where hate that, dude. Okay, but <sighs> you know, like I'm already white. Why are you gonna make me glow? Hmm? You know, like oh. I'm already out there. Like, hey, <laughs> look at me. You know, like I don't need like. You know, to blind people. Yeah, but the other stuff's bad, dude. Yeah. It's bad for you, bro. <laughs> and then true. it's bad for the it's bad for the coral reef. You know that? It's that, bad. It's bad for the ocean. Well, were mm. you weren't swimming in the ocean, were you? No, I was in a pool. Yeah. The yeah. fuck does that I matter? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad for the ocean. Like, you're you're killing the environment yeah, yeah, yeah. too. Like look at all these things you're doing. I just tried to asshole. throw try to throw in one more thing in there. Like, oh man. <laughs> make him feel bad. I, know, I was doing all that stuff. You're gonna grow a vagina and kill fish. <laughs> Like, hey, some people are, yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know. But yeah. you're going to have an awesome tan. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, you know, honestly, I could probably, it, I could probably not wear any kind of sun block, but it would take a lot of like small doses. Like, you I'd just come out like 10 minutes. You have to go swimming. It, oh, that was too much. You have yeah. to go swimming in a sweater and it's <laughs> <laughs> in a hood. Well, dude, my kids wear like those rash guards and like, uh, it's so great that they have all that stuff they can swim with now. Yeah. And, like, so, but they actually, they actually get like dark and, and, you know, they didn't get all of those genetics from me, which is good. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But Cor Courtney, she's, she's also pretty she's fair. She's also white, but her sisters are really tan. Really? Which is weird. Yeah. yeah. yeah she's the oddball. When I go out in the summer, I have to put on, if I'm going to be out there for longer than a couple hours, I have to put on something for the first one or two days. And then after that, nothing. Yeah. And I can literally just lay on a rock all day. And I hate you guys. And I'll come out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did, I, did, you, did I ever show you the picture of when my son went to, he went to Italy with his mom? And he, they took a picture of his foot because he was out in the sun all the time. Uh -huh. And he's literally like, it, 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 we get so dark that you can't even tell that he's Italian. It looks like he's African or something. Like super, super dark yeah. skin. Yeah. Like that's how dark. That's how I was a kid. Your skin gets that dark. Too. As a kid, I was like that. Uh, you know, and I used to never wear sunscreen ever. And I could just be out in the sun. I mean, we lived by a lake, right? Mm -hmm. So when I lived out by uh, Lake Don Pedro. We were on the water like every day, and it gets like 110 out there. You just scorch. And like sometime, I want to say like around high school time, I started getting like these like uh, 
sun blotches, like almost like rashes. Oh, wow. And I couldn't do it anymore. I, then that's actually when I started wearing sunscreen. Uh, up until that point, I never wore it, never had a problem. And then all of a sudden, as I started to get a little bit older, I started to get like this reaction where I get like a rash from yeah. it. So now I have to. You know, what's funny is that they, when they, they did, made this huge push, right, for sunscreen for a long time to prevent uh, skin cancers. Mm -hmm. And then some places were seeing when people were doing that, they saw a slight drop in skin cancers, but then they saw a rise in all other cancers because this, the because chemicals of, and everything. Well, no, because of the lack of the vitamin D and oh, the benefits right. of the sun. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah and, uh, and, and the reality is, uh, obviously, you don't want to burn, burning's bad. But work your way slowly and then have your body build its natural. But it's, of course, there's an individual variance, right? If you're, you know, like Irish or Scottish or whatever, there's going to be less of a tolerance. Well, is it, wouldn't that be the yeah. most ideal key would be like if you had like, a, you know, two weeks straight of like really nice weather and sun that, you know, Justin would start just the first day 10 minutes out and then not be out. And then the next day, 15, 20 minutes out and not wear any sunscreen, yeah. but just slowly do that. Without, that would be, yeah. that would probably Until be. Until I start smelling like bacon. <laughs> and I'm like, I get out of here. His skin starts <laughs> to, to bubble mm. a little bit. Yeah, delicious. <laughs> That's gross. I thought you would be more tan coming back from Vegas. No, we didn't do anything in the sun. Oh, okay. really? No, we were going to sweat. Actually, actually um, not that hot. It was like in the 70s and it was a little windy. Oh, really? really? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, because he had like, you were in oh, the 90s. Like, yeah, 90s. Yeah, it was, it was cooking. No, we were spending time uh, mainly with family and uh, but, oh man, I'd made a huge mistake. We, 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 we stayed at a casino and I don't know why I didn't think this. This is like a totally just, neither, neither Jessica nor I thought of this. We booked one room and we have the baby, which is stupid because the baby goes down at seven and yeah, and then so what do you do? In the dark, <laughs> just chilling. Yeah, yeah. I can't turn on the TV or anything, so yeah, we're just no. yeah, just chilling on our phones. Like no. seven o'clock, night's over. Let's just oh yeah. Let's just I try relax. to I try to convince Katrina to put him in the closet. The last time we did that, she would, she would go for it. <laughs> just well, the principle. Of it. We yeah. were we were in a Vegas hotel. We almost did. And we did the same thing. Yeah. And I'm like, look how big that it closet makes is. Sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, look how big that closet Spacious. is. So we're not putting my son in the closet. We almost did that. I'm like, right? I think it's logical. <laughs> well, you know, it prevented me from doing it's like a dark it's and, a mini room yeah. you know okay so we almost did that but what prevented me from doing that was i'm like i wonder what the ventilation <laughs> yeah, i know that's, well, that's the what, air situation that's what she said I'm like, maybe if it. we make a couple holes in the top yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, we'll, some holes i was there. like we'll leave it cracked you know what i'm saying <laughs> no we did you know yeah. what we did is we put his like pack and play in the bathroom but the problem was the bathroom had one of those like frosted glass doors yeah so it would light up all yeah the dude so we still i mean it was a little better because at least he's in another room but it's funny because he's next to the toilet so seven were you guys at red rock was that where you guys were at? yeah 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 that's the same uh, really yeah it's the same situation yeah so, so 7 p.m i'm like okay not so only are we going to bed but we're also can't use the bathroom so she, i can't go to the bathroom what we did was we built so we had the exact same issue at red rock last time <laughs> we were there because then they had the, the bathroom windows are hella bright you, yeah. light, you turn uh -huh. them on and yeah. it lights the whole room yeah. up because it has the see-through door so we actually uh we we took a, a sheets and blankets over the pack and play so once we put them down we built it like a tent and just covered the sides and over the top hmm. so he oh, was I didn't think of that yeah yeah that was our that was our solution to that because we were the same thing we're like what the fuck are we doing we, seven o'clock well here. so the yeah, first night a waste so the first night so I, you know you guys know that sleeping has, has been an issue right with with my kid i mean generally he's, everything else is good but sleeping can be an issue right especially when you're traveling you're trying to do the naps and the whole yeah, thing throws off. oh yeah and then the it's just a, and then it's just a nightmare right so anyway we find we the first night we're there right we put him down and the person across the hall from us they come home at like 2 a.m loud as fuck some girl is just blah yell, ha, ha, laughing whatever and i can just feel jessica start to fume and i know <laughs> i'm like she, like I'm more like I'll be a little bit more like I'm not gonna say anything. Let me just see. What, and she's much more like I'm gonna go punch someone in the face. Yeah. In, in real life. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god, we can't. Whatever. Anyway, so the next day, she calls down the front desk and she's like, can you talk to room whatever and tell them please don't be noisy tonight? And they're like, no, we can't talk to them unless they're actually doing it in the moment. So she's like blasting the person, hangs up. She's like, I'm gonna go knock on the door. I'm like, oh my god, here we go. <laughs> I'm like, all right. So we go over there and we talk to the guy. No, you guys didn't. <laughs> Well, hey, dude, you know, because she ain't going to not talk to him, uh, and I'm not- Yeah, you're like, Yo, at least let me go- This uh, is going to be fun. Let me go mediate this a yeah. little bit. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, here's you the thing. You her back a little here's bit. Here's the thing I think a lot of, uh, especially women, don't understand. When men talk to other men, uh, and we're telling yeah. them, like, you're being loud, whatever, right. we always- With intensity. There's always a threat of violence, right? Yes. I don't think women understand this. So as the husband, I'm like, okay, like, I hope he reacts okay, because <laughs> who knows what's going to happen. Anyway, yeah. guy answers the door. He's really cool. 
And he's like, hey, listen, I'm really, really sorry. First he goes, uh, he opens the door and he goes, oh, I'm sorry about the smoke. And it's like, smells like weed. And we're like, I'm like, I don't, give, I don't care about that. That's fine. In fact, give me a hit. No. I'm yeah. like, whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's not the problem. So she tells him, hey, can you keep it down? And he goes, oh, don't worry. He goes, she's gone. She's not coming back tonight. It's all good. He's like, someone else will be here or whatever. And, I'm, and then he closes the door and he's cool. And, and she's like, that's kind of weird, but whatever. And I'm like, you do realize he's talking about. A hooker, right? Yeah. And she's like, what? I'm like, that's what he means. She's not coming back tonight. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. got a loud yeah. hooker yeah. last night. Yeah. He's going to have a different one come yeah. tonight. Yeah. Oh, More my. quiet one. Oh, yeah, my I got, God. I got, I got reservations. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I gave her a bad uh, star review wow. on, on Yelp. Wow. I know, yeah. dude. Yeah. Wow. I wanted to just be like, oh, I'll give him a tip. Listen, just pay her to shut up. Uh. <laughs> well, I got myself into a little bit of trouble. I went to Disneyland, so we- Oh, had, yeah. How was that? Because it was just opened back up, right? Yeah, so there was like a lot of positives to it and a lot of negatives all kind of smashed together. So it was it was interesting. It was a totally different experience. And I kind of knew that, you know, going into it because of everything they had to kind of adjust and, and uh, make up for and figure out how to like deal with all these restrictions and whatnot. And so like, first of all, Courtney had to be on the line for like 10 hours just to get a reservation That's for crazy. this. Yeah, and, and, and almost gave up a few times because it was like it went to like the... Uh, like basically like it was saying like, it, you know, you're on standby or whatever. And then it went off and she thought she lost the call and dropped it. Anyways, it was a whole debacle, but then we finally got like our way in. And so uh, we get there and it's like, there's just stacks of cars. Once you get to the actual um, parking lot, and it's just like, you know, one by one, they're kind of checking people in. And then, so the, the security of it was, you know, really intense, which I kind of imagined it would be. And they do the whole, like, you know, temperature check and, and oh wow and so yeah and, and checking all your bags and stuff um so basically what they had to do was uh push everybody outside so a lot of the rides that are like indoors like they don't have you waiting in there which was a totally different experience it turns out so you know like as you're as you're waiting in line there's noises there's shit to look at there's you know whatever you're out of the sun that's true because they design them so that you don't you're not just sitting there waiting right you're looking at stuff that's yeah i didn't even think of that yeah you're looking at things like you you kind of just passing the time, like kind of doing your thing. And so uh, you're basically like, so for one of them was one of the Star Wars rides. We, we were out in like what seemed to be like a loading dock area. Like like they just opened it back further and we have to like follow these like taped wow. lines and all this stuff. And uh, and then finally you make it there and you like rush to, to the very front. And so you're just like, boop, I'm on the ride, you know? And so kind of like, that was weird. Now, but. were the weights longer or shorter? Because I'm assuming they have limited people, right? They shorter, like- yeah. It was like probably like 25% capacity or whatever. Oh, okay. oh, that's it. Yeah. It was, I mean, so that was a very much of a positive. We were like stoked. We got really tired because we were just like doing a gajillion rides. Wow. Uh, and, and they close it early, like at seven. So they don't want like any crowds forming or anything. So there was no fireworks. There was no like, you know, parades or nothing like that. Um, but, uh, with the whole mask thing, I just couldn't do it, dude. Are you supposed to wear a mask outside the while you're there? The whole time. Not even just, just the whole time. Like oh, you have wow. to wear it on the ride. Like, like I was like, dude, I'm like, oh, fine. I can breathe. Dude, I can't tell you how many times, like the minute it just slipped down my nose. Like I had somebody just hovering over me, just like, put your mask off over your really? nose. Yeah. And, and so like, I was, I was kind of joking about it with, you know, like Courtney and the guys, we're, we're, we were just like waiting in line and I'm just like, oh God, I'm breathe for a second, you know, and we're waiting on um, Pirates of the Caribbean. We get in there and uh, there's these two guys behind me and I, I kind of felt, you know, when you feel people that are just like, you know, just looking at you and just like, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> they make that face. Yes. <laughs> You're not wearing They're not even right. talking. They're just intensely like, like, mm, judging, like, like hate energy in you, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm just like, ooh, like what's happening. I get to the very front. This lady like lets me through. Everything's cool. Oh great! I'm gonna get on the ride. And then she, all of a sudden, she like about faces runs up to me and is like, "Hey, put your mask up over." Now. I'm like, "What? Like, Are you looking at me? Because it, it was over my nose the whole time. It, like it's over my like if I have to if I have to tell you again, we have to warn you again. We're gonna kick you out of the park. Wow. You're gonna have to get wow. off of this and leave and blah 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 blah. Like Did you tell you said a big nose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tried to explain. Got a big nose. Like, you see this thing? Nose. Look at this thing. Let's push it yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, it's like it doesn't fit. Yeah, it does. and to be fair too, I was wearing a kid's mask because I'm an asshole and I I don't believe you know. So it's like a. Say what you 
like will a, get like mad a, at me, like dude. A G-string mask. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do well <laughs> with this whole fucking, over there. <laughs> the, you know, like this whole oppressive He's wearing bullshit. Two small masks, yeah. one here and one here. <laughs> yeah, maybe in the beginning when it, when we thought it was a Spanish flu, but yeah, let's go back and do some more research and wow. realize the effectiveness. But anyway, so, uh, so yeah, so I was just like uh, like appalled because I've never had that experience at Disneyland. It, like everybody was so like like angry and like really obnoxious like the staff oh, wow. too and like and, and i know a lot of them had to be because they're, they're forced to like you know demand like all these things because they probably felt like they're gonna have to close it down again well, uh, you, know, you, well you know what would happen if they don't i mean you got to believe that all the keyboard warriors come out and start just yeah, hammering just Disneyland. Light, lighten them up you right know? well you gotta i gotta wonder i, I wonder if the Disney World experience in Florida is different than the Disneyland experience in of California course. because of course they're they're kind of two different approaches, right? It For, might be. I honestly, I heard actually the opposite. I heard it's like just as crazy. Really over oh, there? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, they're just as Nazi about it. Because yeah, I thought Florida was all wide open, isn't it? Well, I know yeah, that, I know the, the state is, but that's a that's a, its own like um, enterprise, right? Yeah, because because I, I know here it's obviously been much more strict with all that stuff, and I'm assuming that they're afraid, right? Like, oh crap, they're going to close us down. <laughs> yeah, if so Somebody takes a picture of people with not wearing yeah. masks or whatever, dude. And we're gonna lose our jobs. You know? I swear to God, I got on the list though, dude, because I was like walking around the whole rest of the time, and then I'd see somebody like an earpiece and like, like everybody's like like glasses looking at me, you know. And I, I maybe I was just paranoid, but I started to see it everywhere. You should, you know, what you should do like just yeah. walk around and like just pull your mask up and spit on the ground a couple times. <laughs> I did that. Sorry, I have a loogie. I can't spit in my oh, mouth. I'm such an oh, asshole. God. I did that all the time. I would use that opportunity to drink so so I could just bring it down. Because like, you got to Matt. So we got there at 8 o'clock, and we went all the way till basically 7 o'clock. And to wear a mask It's hot long, outside, too. And it was hot, and they dude, keep pushing us outside. I have Actually, a hard time in the grocery like, store out, for dude. 20 minutes. Yeah, and this 20 is, minutes in the grocery store is like, oh, that's enough for and me. It was insane. This is real talk, by the way, uh, because we were at the you know, casino, and so you're wearing it the whole time you're in there. And then yeah. I even did one workout in their, their hotel gym where you wear a mask. Ugh. And um, it is a little bit, and I don't know if it's psychological or if I'm actually feeling the fact that maybe I'm breathing in a little bit more of my carbon, no, oh. my carbon dioxide. Or whatever. My health you, felt you, like it was going say, down. You think it's psychological? It's like someone's put their hand over your mouth while yeah. you're trying to war work out. Yeah, dude. it makes me, you know, my kids, Not comfortable, my bro. kids have to wear one all day at school and I kind of feel like bad. They do. Yeah. I feel bad. Yeah, for yeah, sure. All day they have to wear it yeah. at school. So I'm like, oh man, this is kind of, it's, you know, if you're not used to it, it's, uh, it definitely feels, wow. You definitely feel, uh, like, it just feels like suffocated, yeah. you know? Yeah. On the, on the uh, positive side of all this mask wearing COVID bullshit, uh, you know, I've been, I've been reading like, it's been really interesting to me to see what businesses have either evolved or changed or that are popped up during this time. Mm -hmm. I came across this one that I thought, I think it was like TechCrunch. I was reading, I don't remember what I was reading, but, uh, it's called. Uh, it's an app called Swimply. Uh, Swim and then P L Y. Doug, check this thing out. So, this guy starts this business. Fucking brilliant, dude. Uh, it, it, it's so brilliant that it makes me actually want to look at it as like a like an. That's as, a funny name, though, huh? Swimply. Yeah, I think I'm saying. Hey, Swimply. I think I'm Swimply. saying it right. So, basically, what you can do is uh, rent people's pools. Oh, Ooh. I saw this. Yeah, isn't it? And there's there's this. people making six figures a year off of renting their pool right yeah. now. And this what? like has wow, look at that! It's like forty five dollars an hour, a hundred dollars yes. an hour, thirty dollars an hour. Yes, I mean it makes sense. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I imagine too if you have a, a a second home, right? That's like a vacation place that you're not there ninety percent of the time. Yeah, but you, you lock up the house. But yes, you let them. I would the totally do that. Yard. I'm like, oh, I don't want them in my house destroying shit. There, but my pool outside. What do I give a shit? I wonder what the rent that out. So like, so no. Oh, so this is so it comes with the app. So oh, they they right. have a, a a million dollar uh, policy. So if someone were to get hurt doing all this, they cover all wow, that. Wow, that's oh, brilliant. That's yeah, no, it's it's all and it's really expl obviously COVID like just made it take off. So he was yeah. starting all the pools are closed. Right, he all was the public he was starting it beforehand. And then that's just it, right? This is where you could come with your people that you've already been quarantining with uh -huh. and rent these pool spaces. And it, so as cheap as like 20 bucks an hour for like a real basic where someone's got these like Now, crazy when people baggage. pay for this, it, are they also paying a deposit in case they, you know, one of their kids shits in the pool or does something weird? I don't know. I didn't look it up. I would imagine there's some sort of a, like a deposit like that, I'm sure. Yeah, because if that happens, then you're... Fine. And or I'm sure part of the... the Somebody I'm, shit in the pool. I'm sure there's... A, <laughs> I'm sure there's also... Like, that happens sometimes. Some sort of <laughs> a, a, a cleaning like, service that probably comes through more regularly if you're, if you're getting that many people coming through your place, I would imagine. 
I just thought that was so fascinating. That is a very interesting. Uh, well, you know, if you think about it, with all these uh, apps, these sharing kind of the sharing economy or whatever the dig, what do they call it? This uh, digital economy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, anything that you can rent is going to be gig economy. rented out. Gig economy. Thank well, you. Well, it goes back to that er that conversation we had earlier. Like, do you believe that we're moving in this direction where you know ownership is going to be a thing of the past? Like you, you buy. You, I think of some things you're going to own. Some things, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's to me that's that's a little scary thought. I mean, I, I, like who else is going to own it? Then? Well, okay. Well, there'll still be investors. There'll be people yeah. that own. Like for example, like this. Like uh, anybody. I don't know if you guys ever looked into putting a pool in your backyard. Mm. It's fucking ex really oh, expensive. And you got to maintain. And then maintaining. It. So you're talking about like a, a minimum thirty to hundred thousand yeah. dollar project that for to just to build and get going and then the maintenance. And if you act, if I guarantee anybody listening right now who has a pool in their backyard and you actually tracked for one year how many times do you and your and family did the math and did the math, I bet you you never pay that full off for thirty to fifty thousand right. dollars. No. But at, especially at the rate where you can go and then you can go to this pool that's probably ten times better at somebody else's house right down the street mm. for sixty well, it just seems hour. like business is more moving into like, situations like that, like single home family things where it's like, how do we maximize like all these spaces and like we can, you can come in and, and, and eat, you know, fresh cooked meal and like, yeah. there's ways to like maximize and monetize, uh, you know, whatever you have. Why not rent just somebody's backyard? So mm -hmm. even forget the pool. Let's let's say you don't have a pool, but you have one of those really nice setups with a, the the barbecue and you know where people so can come and I rem have barbecues. I place. imagine that's how. So I mean, if you looked at the app when Doug pulled it up, there was ones ranging from like twenty something bucks to a high as hundred and something a da an hour. That probably include all that exactly. Stuff. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you have like a like a cabana out there, well, so let's speculate. What are the things that you guys think that at the moment? If you use it, you own it. But in the future, it's probably going to be very different. And obviously, cars. Cars, yeah. Cars is a big one. That's the most obvious one. I don't see anybody when you know AI cars or whatever self-driving cars become widely accepted and regulations allow them to happen. Uh -huh. I don't see people generally owning cars. It's just not going to make any I, sense. I do, but I see hmm. them owning them like horses. That's I, what I mean. Like yeah, very few people. Yeah, you, you won't see people driving them to and from work. I think that type of deal will be... Well, think about how many people own horses today versus how many people own horses <coughs> right, fair years enough. ago. Yeah, no, totally. So it'll be like that. So cars, I, yeah. is there anything else you guys I mean, want I mean, think, I think just houses in general, like if you're like want to throw a party or you want to use it for out of the backyard, whatever it is, the pool, obviously, but, uh, you know, lots of different like ways that people could use a house, you know, for weddings or whatever that's true right like all the stuff that we tend to rent anyway right now like halls right think about all the halls that people rent or the restaurants that people rent that can be replaced by some of these people's you know nice homes and stuff yeah parking but as far, lots yeah. as far as owning is concerned i'm trying to think though i could i could i mean already you rent tux tuxedos so that's a thing mm -hmm. suits do you guys think suits will start to become Oh, kind I think of, they already have that. Yeah. Really? That exists, doesn't it? Yeah, Don't. I know businesses, but I mean more yeah. like a sharing app where, you, you know, you, how, what's your size or whatever? Can I borrow your... Oh, I bet there's something out there like uh, that. There probably is, yeah. I, yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, I can't... But what at home gyms? Could you guys see people renting <clears throat> that's home gyms? Out? Yeah. <clears throat> that's yeah. a thing already, too. Yeah, that could totally be. That's People are doing that. People that have these home gyms are renting out or are started doing that. That's another business that popped yeah. up during COVID. I don't remember what the app was called. But people are renting out their their gym space, especially. I mean, what a brilliant time to do that when there's it's hard to get gym equipment at home, so you just rent your space out by the hour. So, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I know you're seeing it all over the place. Yeah, I like it because it allows. Uh, it's a very efficient way of using space. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I think it makes a lot of logical sense. I'm I'm on the other end of that though. I don't want anybody near me. So I'm just like, <laughs> <dude>, no. <laughs> <laughs> None of these ideas like resonate with me. I'm like, <laughs> I want my shit to be my shit. You go over there and get I don't your own shit. I don't want to share. No, <laughs> it's, I don't want to share. Yeah. Sharing yeah. is for yeah. Anyway. Well, there'll still be like you, you're saying that there's obviously still going to be somebody who owns it, right? So some people will still be able to buy and invest in it. But it, you'll, I think it it won't make sense for the average person. I mean, especially when we talk about houses and stuff. Even like housing. I mean, it's. It was so popular when we were younger and the generation before us. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a realtor over the weekend about this who was like in his late 50s. And he's talking about how, you know, I'm just, you know, we we're talking about the market and current where we were at and stuff. And he's just like, yeah, it's just, I was like, man, it must be great to be a realtor right now. And he goes, yeah, it's kind of a double edged sword, right? I mean, it's, it's great for business, but, <clears throat> you know, I have kids in their, <clears throat> their 20s and early 30s. And he goes, I just, 
I can't see them ever affording a house anywhere out here. I mean, you got to have 20, 20% down on a, a property in, in, in the Bay area is, you know, yeah. you're talking a quarter to a half it's a million. Insane. Yeah. Like, and who saves, who's 20 years old and saves a quarter million to half a million dollars a year. I mean, I, I mean, in, no one in, in a, <laughs> you know, 10 Unless years. All of a sudden yeah, Dodge coin or one of well, those things. Went and when there. I was telling him, I said, you know, but part of that is, uh, you know, we 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 always have painted this picture for this the, the kids and the generation coming up that like you know part of the American dream is to buy your home. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's that, like that's like the part of the formula. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. like that one of the biggest parts, right? It's like a, one of the biggest accomplishments most people have in the you know in their lifetime, right? And so I think we're moving away from that. I think we're moving away from that being as big of a deal. Even myself, it was watching that transition happen and, and struggling with that too, thinking like, what well, you don't, you know, There's a lot it's interesting of to think about that too, because you look at the layout of homes and how that's changed over the years too. Like, so when, when you, we've been like kind of house shopping, looking at different types of uh, like, if one was in the seventies, if one was even like earlier than that, like there's just the way that people lived was so different. Like the, the importance of like where the master bedroom was yeah. versus like where the kitchen is, how the layout of it is, if it's open, if yep. it's, you know, what, what kind of situation was it? it and I feel like we're going through another phase of that where people are just like maybe more open to living, you know, somewhat temporary in one spot, but also having another location where they can kind of split time between. You, you know, because the biggest difference I see between the newer houses and the older ones, the biggest mm -hmm. difference by far is the backyard. Mm -hmm. By far. By, backyards now are tiny, even in expensive, really expensive homes. Yeah. They leave such a small space for the backyard, whereas the older houses, the backyards were all pretty, you know, pretty big. Well, I think a lot of that's just because of the, I mean, we live in the Bay Area and there's no land. Right? It was even like that. Yeah, so I, so we were in Vegas. And by, by the way, everywhere, prices of houses are going up. This is part of the inf inflation that's happening. In fact, uh, who, who was it? Who's the investor? The big investor? Did you get Warren Buffett? Did you guys watch that? I, I, I read about it. So I read oh, about okay. what he said. Yeah, no, he's he, like, inflation. Inflation's already here. It's happening. Yeah, it's yeah. accelerating. And a big, uh, uh, you're seeing a lot, a lot in houses for a couple different reasons. One, inventory is still low because all the houses that are supposed to foreclose aren't. And then number two, the the building supplies are through the roof. Like a sheet of plywood is like three times as expensive. So can you explain to me? One of my friends was trying to argue to me that they had disproven that inflation could happen right now. That's so silly to me. I know. I just what like do you mean, my it? brain hurts so so much that I couldn't even come back with a good response. It's it, very simple. It's very there's, straightforward. It's very yeah. simple. Yeah. There's more money. It's right. That's not tied to actual production services or whatever. Yeah. So if there's just more money, everything becomes more expensive. But this is a real like uh, philosophy and yeah. thought that's floating around. Yeah. Right so now. to make it simple, if if we gave every single person in America one million dollars right now, if all of a sudden the government just gave everybody a million dollar check, all prices would go through the roof. Everything. Yeah. Of all the things that people are competing and using their money to to purchase, so it wouldn't help uh, anybody. But I was even you know in Vegas we're looking and the houses there are going up quite a bit. Doesn't even come close to here though. I was looking at houses over there that were like. 1.2, 1.3. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're looking... I mean, these these places, compared to what you get over here for that, was yeah. just uh, insane. Oh, Insanely yeah. Insanely different. Yeah, no, it's 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 crazy, for yeah. sure. I mean, you see uh, my uncle's backyards coming together over there. Have oh, you really? seen pictures no, of it yet? No. Oh, yeah, dude, it looks crazy. I mean, he literally is designing it like a Vegas hotel. He's got a nightclub back there, huh? Yeah, it's... I mean, the damn backyard is going to be almost as expensive as the fucking house was. Mm. I mean, he's jumped that much. But he had a huge lot. You saw his backyard. That yeah. thing mm -hmm. is, like, massive. Mm -hmm. And he's they're about three quarters of the way through. I think it's supposed to be done by next month. And it looks like it looks like a casino, mm -hmm. you know, pool area. Which hey, when cool. you when you go to Vegas, do you still gamble at all, or do you just go visit and then? Uh, this last time I did not gamble. I went there and I, I visited my uncle, and then we did business and stuff like that. So there was no mm -hmm. gambling. But yeah, I mean, I still I still love, I like to gamble in Reno more than I like to gamble in in Vegas. Aren't the aren't the I feel the, like you win more in Reno. Well, I'm also know. I'm yeah. also aren't like, the machines. I'm like in, in Reno. I'm I'm like a medium sized fish to a big fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In true. Vegas, I'm like I, I've told that story. Didn't I tell that story? Yo, I got a hundred bucks. Didn't I tell that story at up. Vegas? Like, Where's my room comp? So I was I was uh I this was like during a uh, like a heavy gambling streak for me where I was gambling a lot <clears throat> and I had just gone on like a few runs of like Reno going out to Reno and there I go to Reno and I have like the the top suite I get the limo take me to lunch and all this stuff like that and like you know it's, and this ain't like I, I don't have to be balling like I'm gambling three to five thousand dollars a night like on the table it's not crazy 
And then I go to Vegas, right? <clears throat> and all the tables are already like double, right? They give you a free bottle of water. Well, I, I lost, <laughs> I, I lost like seven thousand dollars in like a couple hours uh, one night, and uh, of course, fucking pissed off, right? So I'm all fucking mad, I'm like beginning of my trip, and I'm like, my way of like justifying it when I lose money like that when I be real, I'm like, oh, you know, they're gonna, they'll take care of my dinner now, they'll take care of this room, they'll, and I start, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of a wash, you know what I'm saying? So I get, it's a, it's a, <laughs> what kind yeah, of dinner are you yeah, ordering? Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I go, I go over to Vegas, and the, the guy like laughed at me. He's just, I was like, "Hey, can I wanted, I got a, you know, I can't remember what kind of room I had at that point." I said, "Hey, I just, I mean, I just got creamed. I lost uh, all this money and stuff like that." I was like, "Yeah, hey, you know, is it possible you guys could upgrade me?" And, oh yeah, let me pull you up. And I pull, I'm like, "Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, sir." <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't You're even not get even a blip. On yeah, I can't even get like a three hundred dollar upgrade to my room after dropping that much. And the Vegas, they don't give it. You're nobody there. No. Dude. So I like to, I like to There's gamble. High rollers more. over there. Yeah. Big for the, money for that reason. I yeah. did what I always do. I always yeah. do the same thing. I'll take twenty bucks. That's <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I do. I take twenty because I hate gambling. I'm not a gambler. I don't like. I, if I lose a dollar, the twenty five cent slot machines. It's exactly what I did. Like, yeah. I went up to it. I, I felt the one that was calling. Me, we all fortune. No, there was one that yeah. that <laughs> made the. So you know when you if you're so wa- if does. you're watching the podcast or you listen to the podcast when the when it starts the there's a like a hawk sound. You know, right? So I'm walking through yeah. the casino and there's always a machine that makes that fucking sound. Yeah. The exact same sound. That's on our quad. <laughs> what is it? The dog, it's like a falcon. It's a red, red tail red tail hawk. hawk. Red tail hawk. Okay. Yeah. So you, I, I hear that sound. So I'm always like, that's a sign. <laughs> it's a sign. Yeah. It's a winning sound. Yeah. So I'm walking over. I'm trying I, to find I like this strategy. Keep yeah. Going, I'm trying yeah. to find the machine and I, <laughs> I'm like, ah, it's this one, right? So I put my my 20 bucks in there. 80 bucks. No way. Every time. Oh, God. Every time I, I Good come for out you. positive. Casinos Good. hate me. Good for you. Yeah. Oh, they hate you. Yeah. That's big money. Never, well, it doesn't matter. I never give them money because the second I win, even if it's a dollar, I take my money. Yeah, no, casinos hate someone like you because you're not yeah. the norm. The norm is that you just keep gambling. That's yeah. how, that's how they always win. I mean, statistically, it'd be, it be it should be a 50-50 shot both for the gambler and for the casino, but the truth is- It's so funny, though, it's to, keep you there. to yeah. walk the through a casino and then see people having to wear masks because of protecting their health, uh-huh. and you see the most obese people in the world sitting in front of these machines- Put it down to smoke. Cha- yeah. Chain <laughs> smoking. Yeah. Chain smoking the whole time. And I'm walking through, and I'm like- this <laughs> the irony is totally missed on it. Yeah, none of this stuff is adding up to yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, I, I want to make sure that we take this time to shout out some of the, the fire stations. Dude, have you guys been getting the DMs? Yes. yes. Have you? Yeah. yeah. Doug, what are some of That's so cool. Read off some of the so, <laughs> some of the people that are listening right now. Yeah, we got uh, Christopher Road, St. Joseph, Missouri Firehouse. Hoo hoo! Station 4, <laughs> Hoover Fire Department <laughs> in Alabama. Yeah. What up? The Marine Corps Mountain Warfare Training Center Fire Deport, uh, Department in Bridgeport, California. Oh, yeah. Sounds badass. And this one is the police officer Carlisle Barracks in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. thank Shout you. Out. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely appreciate all, I you, forgot all you guys that, and girls. I forgot that we brought that up the other day, and like I started getting all these DMs of, of, of stations that were all listening, so that's pretty cool. That's man. awesome. Yeah, that's I, awesome. I, I ran into a couple. Of, uh, what made me think of that, too, was I was... Mm. This weekend, I was coming out of Target. Or at first, I pull up to Target, and uh, I'm I'm driving the Camaro, so I park like you know fucking a mile away from where it's at. And out in the middle of nowhere in this parking lot is this fire truck. Have you guys seen the new fire trucks that are out? No. no. So there, it's a German-made truck, and it's it looks like a transformer. Pull it up, Doug. This thing's sick. Huh. I, yeah. So I go I go into Target. I go shopping. I'm There's like, a joke here somewhere. I, don't know. I, think <laughs> I, know. I go I go walking. I come walking out, and at the same time, I almost ran into like these. Do they have these, new German helmets too? These or? three no. these three firefighters. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> no. Okay. And they were uh, they were we, they were talking. We were talking as we were walking up. I said, "Hey, is that your your fire truck out there?" And they're like, "Oh, I sure hope it is." And I was like, "Okay, that was a good." They one. were wearing, they yeah, were- of course, yeah, <laughs> of course. It was like one of those. Uh, Here's your sign, yeah, fucking, yeah, <laughs> asshole. Oh, hey, you guys drive yeah. this? <laughs> so <laughs> they gave me a t- no, no. I just dressed like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got the smart ass response for that, right? Uh, so I mean, how do you start that conversation up anyway? You I know, know what I'm it's tough, right? Right. It's so. like when you walk up to twins. Hey, are you guys uh, twins? Yeah, <laughs> fire truck. You pulled it up, John. <laughs> look at look at new new fire truck, German made fire truck. Yeah, I see a lot of different things here. Let me. What it looks like a transformer. You can't miss it. Like, it well, lo- I don't know. It's uh, let's see. Is this any of them here? Is uh, it looking like this? No, no, no. Those okay. look weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> hold on. Let the Google master get on. Yeah, I know. Oh, Let's all do this. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say new. I would put new in front of that. By the way, I wouldn't just say German. 
Because for all I know, they've been making them for a while. This is in uh, San Jose. Well, European Marina. cars are typically like a bit smaller, I would think. It wasn't small though. This thing, and by the way, I, I even asked how much they cost. Right, so it's oh look at that one, seven hundred grand for one of those. Is it things, this dude. one right here? It's crazy. Look, I'll it? send it to, to Doug if that's it. Yes. All right. See, of course, Sal. Jeez. Come on, Doug. What are you doing, Sal? Step your game up over there, guy. Yeah. Google fingers. Over. I know, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah no, he's no. got Doug, the, the Doug's Google, not Google thumb. Fingers. Yeah. Isn't, yeah. That thing, isn't that thing badass, though? It, it is. Let me send it to Doug right now so he can pull it up on the screen. Yeah. You know what's funny? I didn't know that that Googling was a skill until you guys told me that. Yeah. I had no idea. Of course but it apparently is. apparently it's, it's a skill. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, was it Jamie that, you know, with the Joe Rogan show? Like, he'll, he'll like, anticipate. It's, it's like, crazy. Like, like some of the stuff that, like, is already already pulled out you're like what how do you even find that uh, like like all these see, like your fact checking your problem doug is and how you're searching there you, if you tur you typed in german made fire trucks transformers you'll never find it that way just put new fire truck marina because that's what we got uh, marina yeah. wow. i sent you the picture so you just pull it up yeah, yeah. i got it uh, <laughs> you sent it to me but you didn't send me the link where you found just, it just so post the picture yeah. well that's, yeah i have to change everything uh, oh sorry uh, yeah yeah well, i'm, I'm making my life complicated here guys I, I, hey by the way i don't <laughs> yeah. even use google i use DuckDuckGo now yeah oh you me do too. i do yeah, yeah. really yeah because yeah, google tracks now, do you, everything do you, have, do you have to change that in your browser to go to that or do you yeah uh, mm -hmm. okay so yeah so that's my automatic uh, uh search now and it's yeah. just as good just as good i mean it's good there it is justin look look how cool that thing is whoa it does look german doesn't it very yeah some crazy lines on that thing. Yeah. Right. So what does it do different? Does it just look cool? Yeah. It just. Yeah. I mean, it's got more space in it, and all the. It has all the cool monitors and gadgets yeah, it's and beefy bugs. for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like uh, real thorough with uh, fire trucks as it is. So I would I, ask I, him, like, yeah. what does it do differently yeah. than the normal? Uh, yeah. he didn't say. It, I mean, it looks the PSI. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, fast cannon. Faster, yeah. more room. Like, I mean, things like that. Responsive handles better. Like, you know, all that stuff. Does it sound different? Um, you know what? I don't like a V twelve. Well, like, no, no. What I mean is, have you have, have you guys ever heard of uh, like heard ambulances and stuff in Europe? They don't sound. Like oh they do yeah, over yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Oh no, or like police. They like you yeah, hear a police different... car here and a police car over there. And I hate to say it, like, I know I'm going to offend people, but the police cars over there just sound weak. They don't sound scary. Yeah. American cop cars, that's scary. Yeah. Oh Pro really? Yeah. Probably because they'll shoot you over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you fuck around. You fuck around. This is true. What is that quote? Try it and fuck around. Fuck around and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's over here. <laughs> yeah. No, they definitely have different siren. They're like neener, like, neener, neener, neener. Yeah. Neener. I, I, I'm not gonna take that seriously. I'll just keep neener. driving. Neener, neener, <laughs> neener. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, over the, they have the that. ones over there. They have like the Lambos and the crazy shit over there. Don't I've they? seen that before, and that to me just is just screams bureaucracy. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like yeah. the, the state has all this money, oh, yeah. and they tell them this is where your taxpayer money is going. Yeah. Cool. You guys want a Lambo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although there was a, God, where was it? There was a town here in the U.S. where the SWAT team got like a tank. Wow. Yeah, like a legit tank. I'm like, holy shit, what do you need that for? Like, you could like shoot things out of it and everything, or it I just like would mow through buildings. I don't know if it was low, like if it had a, right, like like a, a low, cannon on yeah, it. Yeah, that worked, but I think it was like that. Damn. Like they could drive through shit. Well, oh, I got another that, cool thing serious. for you that I think Justin will really like this. Doug, here you go. Let's see if we can. Here's another layup for you, Doug. Uh, <laughs> look up Raiders End Zone, okay? The new, oh, ra the new Raiders End Zone. Is, I saw this. Is a night Oh, I drove by the, the Raiders. <laughs> is uh, it sick? Yeah. Well, it, it looks, looks like a, it's like, it looks like a big Darth. Vader. I know. I know. I love it. And they've now designed nightclubs at the end of the end at the end zone. Yeah. So they have like bottle what? bottle table oh, service. The, okay. Yeah. See if they see if Doug can so find. There's like picture. sections of it where you could have like private party. Basically Straight right there. To see, the see there's a DJ right there, and then yeah. those are all like big ass booths well, right that's there. Smart. And bottle service. At, brilliant. That's very smart. As long as they brilliant. have like yeah plastic stuff instead of like you yeah. know like actual bottles. Let's see Raiders game. That would be a bad idea. A Raiders game with two nightclubs in the stadium. What could go wrong? Serving alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. You get those guys with the the shoulder spikes and painted faces. Yeah, because because yeah. let's be honest. I, I mean, I'm not a huge sports fan, but one thing I do know is that Raiders fans, those are the fuckers. Oh, they're the got, craziest. Yeah, the well, ones. that was also when it was in Oakland. Maybe it's a little bit different in Vegas. I mean, I mean they're, they're hardcore, bro. They'll, look at, look they'll look at, drive. I think Vegas. they'll drive. Okay. Yeah, I think they'll look make that. it there. Wow! Tell me that is not sick. That is very. That I mean, is that's awesome. awesome yeah. Right? Did I tell you guys about the one uh, NFL game I went to when I was younger? I went to one. What? Yeah, I went to a Seahawks versus. Uh, <laughs> it was Raiders versus Seahawks. Wow! And uh, I was like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> I saw this dude. 
He was dressed in a Seahawks in his Seahawks garb. Oh, and at just, a Raider game. He just Ooh. happened to walk through oh, the yeah. wrong area. Yeah, and people were throwing drinks at him yeah. and shit. I've seen the same. Yeah. I went to the Raiders the Niner games like when I was a kid, and and just saw people get beat up in the parking lot, and just for not wearing the right, you you know, like colors, and it's just like, dude, what the f- what are you doing? It's not even a game. It's, no, that that kind of stuff pisses me off. Yeah, it's only there that I've had that experience too. I mean, I've been to a lot of stadiums and been watching, been the opposing team, but like the Raiders are the only yeah. place that we've had beer that. thrown at us and stuff. Yeah. You just kind of got to like slough it off. You yeah. Know? What do you, so what do you think that is? Obviously, there's, there's a psychological tribal, bro. Super you tribal. You? Yeah. You it's like me? your primal life. It's no different than what we see in politics and everything else it's today. A, it's like it's, it's the same it's, monster. I mean, I really feel like that's what the, the model that politics are taking is like that uh-huh. same type of, you know, tribal mentality. My team's better than yours. Like that. Not just my team's better than yours, but because. Because you're on another team. That's right. What do you see? You. And what do you see with politics? Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. like you're 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 not a part of my team. I hate your team. You know, yes. It's got to that point. They have they, they're the extreme example yeah, of that wow. for sure. Well, speaking of drinks, did you guys do any drinking or partying this weekend? Yeah. So I mean, I did the story as like uh, some people saw for when I went down uh, to my place in, in Palm Desert, and it was Cinco de Mayo that day, oh, and so yeah. it was just like That's a good time. Yeah, I was like, okay, it's Cinco. I didn't realize it, and we tried hard to get it at this one like our favorite Mexican place did you remember the magic juice or what did you bring it with you yeah so Ma- i had to go back juice. that's who i'm gonna call yeah. for now i'm yeah. not going to well, ch- change in z-biotics name <laughs> that, that i sound- forgot it and i had it in my i had it in my suitcase and like i we were thankful you we could walk across the street to this place i don't have to drive nothing i'm like oh dude it's gonna be on like i'm probably gonna drink a lot so i decided to just get up out of like sitting there waiting for my order and, and just went and got like me and courtney and her uh sister uh, a z-biotics uh, mm. ahead of time thank god because Dude, yeah, hard. it was. Yeah, we went hard. We went hard that night because yeah. they gave us like sh- everybody was so c- uh, celebratory that night and everything. And like was, you know, they had like um, this whole mariachi band. They had one of the um, hostesses there was like singing with them and like they were going around tables. It was like a really fun vibe. But like, yeah, they were some somebody bought us shots, so it just it got kind of wild. Makes a huge difference. Yeah, it got you, wild. You just don't feel this after you try. Woke it once, up the next day, I was okay. I'll never drink without. Z-biotics. It just feels shit without without doing it. But yeah. I don't like magic juice. That sounds dirty. <laughs> yeah, that's doesn't good. sound good. <laughs> I, I don't want to tell like, somebody, yeah. hey, uh, especially if it comes from a wizard. Yeah, I don't want to. Like, hey, do you want to? Yeah. You want to your wizard magic juice? You want to? You want some magic juice before <laughs> yeah, we go yeah. drinking? Well, yeah. or, would you like magic yeah. juice? If you afterwards? say it like that with your eyebrow <laughs> and your lip, I mean, yeah, just for <laughs> sure. Some Magic Johnson, like what kind of magic? Either that, or, or that's like Adam Stripper name when he yeah. comes out. And welcome to the stage, Magic Juice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look out! Oh my God, juice me. Well, hey, you know, speaking of that, we just. So this is a good time to have this um, come to Jesus talk. Oh here. man, yeah, we got so, serious yeah, all of a sudden. Yeah, no, D- just me, went in here. Doug, and Justin have been talking, and I th- we, yeah. you know, I, I don't know how to do this. The best way to sit down and, uh, and talk yeah. to you. So wait till we're we, on the we've live been podcast. To yeah, I just address think, something. I just feel like it's important. We're all we're all that kind of close. I think I feel like that um, we we built a relationship with our audience. I think that the this setup's is, getting me nervous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is yeah. an okay place to do this. <laughs> all right, but we need to. We need to talk to you about uh, this hip thrust thing. It's it's really gotten out of control. It, oh, when I do hip thrust, it, it's getting. Is it make you uncomfortable? I'm, uh, I'm worried for your wife. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. You, you're you're complaining a little bit about your back. Like yeah. I'm just, you know, that that kind of power. I don't know if you can wield it properly. You're doing yeah, it a know. lot. Yeah, a yeah, lot lately. Hey, you know yeah. why I do it a lot? Did you, have you guys seen my ass lately? You have. I know you've seen it because I see you looking at I mean, me. He's the one that slaps. Justin it, looks typically. away because he's uncomfortable. No, my no. butt is looking really round mm. and firm. No, here's the truth. I like the way it contributes to my squats and my deadlifts. And here, and my back, I did hurt it, <laughs> not lifting weights, which. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that's a if that's a. a I think that's what that Justin, means that Justin's concerned about. That you're getting a lot more hip hip thrust power. I don't know if that's going to help this <laughs> situation <laughs> yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> no, yeah. I went I went lighter today. You guys saw responsibility. Yeah, you guys saw I went, I went a little lighter today. Yeah, but you know? I do feel like you're hip thrusting a lot, man. Too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah too yeah. much for our friendship. All just right, too yeah. much. Yeah, and the I little like side you, eye, I you know, like as you're you, doing them and you're looking yeah. over, just, you know. I feel like you would tell me if it was if I was doing it that much, you know what I'm saying? Just I like, pull the sweats down a little yeah, bit yeah, like, just so you can see the, the I'd look at Justin and go, hey, he's yeah. starting to like those way too yeah. much, man. Yeah. Way too much. Right. You can almost see the V thing. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, no, dude. Justin, jump on. I need more resistance. Where should I sit? Right here. No, thanks. Have a seat. Have a seat. I'm going to go faster. Find somebody else. I'm going to speed this up. You guys 
guys need to do more of them. I'm telling you, actually, you don't. Oh, no, everybody needs to do more. No, we can't. You're enough for this gym. You're enough. All right. You've used all of our thrusting power in here. I know. Actually, it felt like today, because I still my QL still is not 100%, they actually, it, it seems to help a little bit. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I still got that QL issue. I don't know. Yeah. Still hasn't gone away. Yeah, it's get, a little get better. Get back into to windmills and, and you know get get more into that. Where's your weight no at? Shit. Where's your weight at right now? What do you weigh? I'm dropping now. Are you? I yeah. Gonna, I was going to ask you. If you I'm were. cutting calories quite a bit. And I I did a deload week uh, last week. And this week, I'm now changing up. I'm going to increase the frequency of my training, but reduce the volume. So I'm going to work out each body part more often. With less volume, see what happens. But I'm cutting my, I've cut my calories. I'm like fully in now on getting just really lean. So that means that I'm gonna be, I'm accepting the fact that I'm not gonna be as strong or whatever. You know yeah. when you make that switch, yeah. When you're like okay with the fact that you're just not. Gonna I be was, strong. yeah. I made that with. We made a pact, you know, after this vacation thing, and uh, yeah. So I'm on. I'm on. What do you finally. mean? Finally, we mean we made. We a pact. is me and Courtney because. <laughs> she, <laughs> Who starts that conversation? Uh, like, me, not, dude. Really? Yes. It's so you sit me. down with your wife and like, hey, babe. Yeah. I think both of us need to lose some weight. <laughs> both of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Need to that just a uh, Tell me how that goes over. Yeah. <laughs> I don't necessarily present it like that, but uh, how do you say? It? <laughs> <laughs> hey, babe, I'm gonna start losing weight. What do you? Yeah, think? exactly. Like, I, I just really think I want to get after it. You know, oh, I okay. tighten up. Like, so yeah. So I, I just want to feel better. Like, really, it's more of a, a feeling better thing in, yeah. in the health. Uh, aspect of it, but I'm also trying to, you know, shred down. Yeah, Let, let's get, let's get after. Yeah, it. I yeah. love to see it shredded. Just shred. That's scary. <laughs> Makes that sound. Ready. Everything. Yeah. Hey, the Q and A portion of this episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Blue Chew. Look, we all love a nice, massive pump when we're working out, but what if the pump down below just isn't delivering? What if your performance is down? What if it's anxiety or stress or maybe something health related? Modern medicine actually can provide you with a solution that will improve your quality of life. So Blue Chew is a company, it's an online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis to your door. It's actually a pretty cool service. You go to their website, which is bluechew.com. You talk to an online consultant. Uh, if they figure out that, if you guys figure out that this works out for you, they will mail it right to your door. So you don't have to go to the doctor's office. You don't have to talk to someone in person, have those awkward conversations. It's really cool. It's really fast. And this comes in chewable tablets. So it's really, really cool. Also, because you're a Mind Pump listener, we're actually going to hook you up with a free month. All you have to do is pay $5 shipping. So here's what you got to do. Go to bluechew.com and then at checkout, use the code Mind Pump to get that free month. Again, just pay the $5 for shipping and try it out and see if it helps you out. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Georgie RX. What are the most effective abdominal exercises? All right. You know, it depends what you mean by effective. So effective for stability, effective mm. for performance, or effective for aesthetics. And by the way, when it comes to performance and stability, this is very individual uh, because what one person may need to improve their performance or stability another person may not benefit much uh, from. For example, you could do exercises where you're stabilizing and then there's other exercises that actually work the abdominals through flexion and extension. But let's talk about aesthetics. I think that's an easier question to answer because the other one is so individual, right? When it comes to aesthetics, what you want to do is you actually want to build the abs because they're muscle like anything else, right? All of your muscles look better as you build them. Of course, to an extent, right? At some point, which is never, almost never happens, your muscle gets too big. That almost never happens. So pretty much uh, when you're talking about aesthetics, what you want to do is develop the muscle. How do you develop a muscle most effectively? Through a full range of motion and with load, right? Um, so one of my favorite exercises to do for abs is like a, a slow sit-up or a Roman chair sit-up with resistance or a leg raise done properly. Um, all, of, all of those include a decent amount of resistance. You have to be able to do them properly, right. but they build the abs. They makes them more visible. It gives you abs that you can see at higher body fat percentages. Well, I totally you know, would echo that. The first thing I want to point out, though, is to be able to make that connection and to be able to feel uh, you know, your abs actually being involved more so than, say, hip flexors and, and really just going through the, the range of motion and going through these exercises without the 
proper intent and, and the proper mind muscle connection. So uh, to really take your time developing that that strong uh, uh, recruitment process it is is massively uh, you know essential for then loading that situation. Well, I couldn't agree more because the best ab exercise is no longer the best ex- ab exercise if you cannot perform it correctly. Yeah. So that comes first, and believe it or not. Uh, a lot of people actually most people are, get it wrong. Yeah, are not connected to. Well, the, look at leg raises. How yeah. how many people do you see do leg raises properly? Right, that's super super rare. Yeah. Um, we have to understand what the abs do, right? So the abs attach at the rib cage. So think of your rib cage, the bottom of the rib cage and the pelvis. And when they contract, it brings the pelvis closer to the rib cage. So literally, it's rounding the lower back. What the abs don't do is bend you at the hips. So if I'm hanging and I just bend my legs, you know, like this, if I just do a leg raise or my legs bend, that's hip flexors. Now my abs are bracing and stabilizing. So I may also feel it in my abs, yep. but I'm not working my abs through a full range of motion. In order to do a leg raise where you're working the abs, you don't just bring the legs up by bending at the hips. You actually rotate at the pelvis so that your low back starts to round and then you bring the legs up. And so you're kind of doing this kind of reverse crunch with your with a long lever, right? With long, with your legs extended. It's not, the abs don't bend you at the hips. And this is mm-hmm. the problem. People think if they're bending forward or bringing their legs back, that's abs. Not true. That can be very much just hip flexors and no abs at all, or just to stabilize. So, mm-hmm. I mean, going back to what, what Justin and you both said, I, I think that the, the, the prereq or the first thing is to get really good at it. So I love like a perfect setup and learning how to like, mm-hmm. you know, articulate every vertebrae, yeah. right? Like really slow and controlled, like yep. get that down really well uh, with just your body weight. Then when you, when you get that connection, you understand, oh, okay, this is how I'm supposed to be doing every mm-hmm. ab exercise, right? Cause mm-hmm. that's what you understand is that when you do that perfect setup and you try and roll the spine up off the ground yep. like that, that's how every ab exercise yeah. should be performed, no matter whether you're in a machine or hanging or whatever. And then it doesn't take a lot of reps. No. You know, it doesn't even take a lot of added weight. No. Like, it's really intense. Oh, it, it's your body weight is tough to do 10 reps like that. I mean, that's really, really tough. But then you get good at that, and then you load it. And and I think that's yeah. probably one of the most underrated things for abs. I think abs were taught. I mean, as a trainer, I did this. I taught abs, you know, c- circuits. Yeah. And you know, 20, 20 bike abs and bicycles into, rotating, yeah, rotating. like because yeah. they can take they can take a beating like that, but if you actually and you'll feel them burn right, and you'll feel the burning sensations. So you think, oh, they're working. I'll get sore from it. But if you actually learn how to really articulate the spine like that, and then load it with some weight for five reps, well, you'll it, you'll it, watch you'll watch your abs. Well, build. it's a muscle like any other muscle. So imagine now we're talking about biceps. Forget abs for a second. So we're talking about biceps. What if uh, you you were like, hey, look, I want my biceps to look really good. I would like nice shape and and sculpt, and I'd like really nice biceps. And your trainer goes, cool. Here's what we're gonna do. Five pound dumbbells, and you're gonna go like this real fast, and then you're gonna move your hands like this real fast, yeah. and then you're gonna bring them up here real fast, and your biceps will burn. Like yeah, that. Your, your biceps <laughs> will burn, but you're not gonna develop your biceps because you're just essentially doing cardio with your biceps. Yeah, that's what people do for their abs, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you want a lot of stamina and endurance in your abs, that's nothing. Okay, that's cool. But if you yeah. want to develop them and develop uh, good aesthetics, which come from abs that are built, mm-hmm. then you want to train them like any other muscle with some load. And resistance. And this doesn't have to be weight, by the way. I, I'll tell you what. Uh, one of my favorite things to do was whenever I got a client, when I was a trainer, and I had a client with workout experience. So usually clients came to me, and they were everyday average people, not a ton of workout experience. But every once in a while, I'd get the the guy or girl that would hire me that's been working out for a while. And especially once I got more established, right? As I got more established, I had more experienced people seek me out because I developed a name for myself. So as people would hire me, they've been working out for a while, and I would do my assessment, and they would say things like, "Oh yeah, my oh, I work out my abs three days a week, and mm-hmm. I'm you know really strong in my core, or whatever." And I'd say, "Okay, cool, we're gonna do a physio ball crunch. We're gonna mm-hmm. just do a sit up on a physio ball." And be, oh, I could do like a million of those. I'd be like, "Well, we're gonna do it. I'm gonna make sure you do them right." right. And then it, I'd put them in position, have them anchor their hips, you yeah. know, push your hips yeah. up, wrap your back around the ball, slowly crunch over the ball, and they do ten. They wouldn't be able to do more than 10 because they never really trained through that full range of motion and really trained the abs the way that they need to be. And they're compensating the whole time. They don't even realize it. Yeah. So the the thing with me too, with abs is like, I've really like cut 
almost like, I mean, it can get crazy with how many different types of exercises are out there that people promote, but really I have like two, I have like three, maybe like go tos. And, and it's like you mentioned with the perfect sit up, it's a decline sit up. And mm-hmm. then it's like, you know, hanging, uh, uh raises and yeah. that's, that's about it. Yeah. yeah. I like the, uh, the ab wheel, which is very hard to do properly. Yeah. Very hard to do. Pro- By the way, we carry those now yeah. uh, at our, our, our store. Didn't you just do a Friday fitness tip on that? I did. Yeah. So I think it, what is it? Mindpumpstore.com. Is yeah. that it? Okay. So we have them now, but my, uh, ab wheels will build your abs. If you can do them properly, it takes a while to get the, to do them yeah. properly. But that's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. I love active planks. Active planks are also very yep. hard to do properly. Uh, we have a YouTube where I, I demonstrate those. So that's a good one. And then uh, reverse crunch or reverse crunch on an incline, which is easier than a leg raise, but still very challenging. Hanging leg raises are one of the hardest exercises yeah. to do properly. To do them that properly right without using your hip flexors the whole time. I don't know very many people yeah. that can do them properly. You have properly. to be really intentional. Next question is from Howie's mom. What is the benefit of doing an exercise sitting versus standing? Oh, yeah. No, this is a great- Say hi to Howie. Yeah, this is a great conversation because you see bodybuilders often will talk about doing things seated because they say things like they could feel the muscle more, they can concentrate more on the connection. Then you you hear like functional trainers and athletes talk about doing things standing Mm -hmm. because of the stability component because they're engaging more of their body. Right. Okay, uh, which one is better? Uh, this is going to be one of those situations where I'm going to say they're both good. Right. They yeah. both have their value. Training standing or training seated trains different uh, recruitment patterns. Now, you can work the biceps both ways, but there's a recruitment pattern that is involved with the whole body. And here's what ends up happening. This is the funny thing. I remember when I used to think doing an overhead press standing was harder, for example, than a seated overhead press. I thought, oh yeah, you're not gonna be able to lift as much standing as you can seated. And that's because I always did them seated. Then I did them always standing. In fact, I almost always do overhead presses standing. Now I can press more standing than I can seated. And all it highlights is, you get you get good at one yeah. versus the other one, but Which they both you do the most of. Yeah, but they both have their value. I mean, how do you, I I toggle just how I feel, right? So because I think they both have value, it's it's like some days I'm in like like Mister Functional mode, and mm-hmm. everything I'm doing yeah. is like standing or challenging stability, and like that's the the goal of the workout of the day, right? Mm-hmm. It's like oh today I want to just be really functional, and I love to do stuff like that when. I know like certain muscle groups are like really, really sore and I don't need to hammer a muscle group. I just, I want to feel good. I want to take things through full range of motion. I want to incorporate my entire body. So then I'll make those choices. Then I have other days where I'm like, oh, I just want like this massive shoulder pump and I'm not really trying to work yeah. anybody else, any other parts of my body right now. And I'm just yeah. going to sit down and do all this stuff. And so I b- bounce back and forth. Oh, I used to be the trainer that was like a total snob about like sitting down. I'm like, nobody's sitting down. Like yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're working. Everything you're going to do is standing in a split stance. Like we're, we're using your body, you yeah. know, you're anchoring your body, you're figuring out how to adjust, uh, you know, and compensate for that and, and, and be able to stabilize properly. So I was just always thinking in the functional realm, uh, and less in, you know, in the hypertrophy realm. And so it, there's definitely a, a switch that happened for me once I started to kind of then, again, like you said, like I, I went into sitting in, in doing overhead press, even as an example, and, and I, and I couldn't lift what I thought I could lift. And, and it was really just a different stimulus and a different recruitment pattern that I wasn't applying. And so there's well, the, definite value in that. The truth is though, if you, were to only do one and, and not the other. Um, if you had to pick. Yeah, if you had to pick. Well, yeah, you, standing. Standing. because it's more for, carryover. Well, for the reason, like you said, okay, you're never- Mainly for my clients. I was always what I was You're thinking. never going to find yourself sitting down in a chair having to lift 100, 200 pounds over your head. You just won't. Mm, yeah. Where, or if you will, I'll wait. Tell me, where would you do that? Where would you sit down and then someone hands you 100 some pounds and you have to lift it over your head? But there may be lots of times in your life where you have to pick something up you know, while you're standing on the ground yeah. and lift it over your head. Even playing with my son, I do that all the time, right? So mm-hmm. it's just way more functional to be, like you said, completely connected from your feet. All if the you way had up. to pick. Yeah, if you had to pick. But a perfect scenario, you incorporate both. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. weave in and out. Yeah. yeah, both of them have value. I, I like doing both of them, depending, like Adam said, uh, depending on how I feel. Um, if you had to pick one, uh, go standing. But look, this is, there's a reason why when you do different exercises that look very similar, they feel different. There's, there's just a, there's a reason for it. I mean, look, uh, I'll tell you what. You could do a standing lateral, right? Standing, standing lateral with dumbbells, or you could do standing one-arm lateral. 
same exercise it feels different. It, it it totally does feel different, and they both have value. So, and that has to do with the, the way the body communicates with itself and how muscles work together. No muscle works in complete isolation, yep. and so it's the combination of muscles. It's how you're holding yourself. It's the position of your body. Look at a, a Z press, seated Z press. I mean, that feels very different than a seated on a bench press, mm -hmm. and definitely very different than a, a standing overhead press. Right. Uh, do they all have value? They do. Yeah. Next question is from Joe D. Fury. Are front squats the incline bench for legs, and should you be able to front squat the same weight as back squat? Yeah, I don't understand the first part of that. Are front squats <laughs> the incline bench for? Oh, I oh, see what I see what's going on. Yeah, yeah, like basically getting a different angle. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you kind of say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is on some oh, level. Oh, I, they're two different exercises. Yeah, I know they're both squats, but they're both very different. And that's why I think that just like incline bench is very different from flat bench. I mean, I think that's a I think it's a good analogy. You it is. See, you could say that it is front squats. You know what's funny is I would have clients uh front squat before i'd have them back squat these are th these were my newer you know clients who kind of getting into squatting mm -hmm. um and i wouldn't have them squat by the way they were front squatting a dowel it wasn't like a weight and by the way that's like an old trainer hack I yeah mean, that, that helps get somebody in that good posture Correct. where their chest is up high which is sometimes a hard cue to get people to do when they do a back squat that's exactly right. why i would do it yeah, yeah. front squats you're you're going to be much more upright you're going to be typically you'll feel it a little bit more in the quads it's like upper mid back stabilization on the back of your body. You can typically lift more. You're going to be bending forward a little bit more, so you tend to feel it more on the back of your body. Um, and uh, it's it's uh, again, you can just lift more. Oh, that getting way, more, yeah. Back squat, you're getting more glute, right? So yeah. you're getting you're getting a, a stronger muscle to help. So the posterior chain's involved in the back back loaded squat more than the front loaded squat, and so. That's where you get the, the the ability to lift a lot more. You're asking, you're you're calling upon a bigger, stronger yeah. muscle to aid in that. But they yeah. both have tremendous value, and they're both different exercises. Yeah, if I ever want to like really hammer my legs and just just get them to really develop, I'll do I'll go back squats, then I'll go front squats. I mean that Ugh. combination of one workout in the same is, workout. Yeah, in the same workout. Ugh. Yeah, and I'm not going like uh, you know if I'm doing a lot of volume, I'm not going super heavy. But man, does that really work and develop my legs like nothing else? There's almost no combination. <laughs> Uh, that I found to be as effective, those two. Yeah, but, there was one point, I mean, I was doing a lot more of like power cleans. Mm -hmm. And so that was very advantageous, obviously, to be able to get in the catch position really efficiently and then be able to dig my way out. And so that was getting pretty strong at, at front squats. But, uh, you know, the the time in between of not doing them for a while and then coming back, man, it's a shell shock if you don't incorporate it. Uh, you know, like I like to like throw it in every at least yeah. two I, to three months. I do like how they compared this to the incline bench. And, and, it, and I do think, and I went through a kick where I was trying to catch my front squat up to my back squat, knowing mm -hmm. that it probably wouldn't happen. I still set a goal. Like, let's see if I can get it close, just like I did with my incline bench. Yeah. And, I, and I saw tremendous value mm -hmm. uh, in doing that. So I do think that's a if you've never done that before where you said oh you know what i'm going to train for a while and really focus on the front squat and try and catch it up i think you'll see incredible development in your legs well the best squatters in the world in my opinion are olympic lifters i know power lifters are known for the weight the, ma the massive amounts of weight that they squat but i think olympic uh, lifters are uh, i would have to say the best in terms of technique and just everything, yeah. just power and strength and technique and form and all stuff and olympic lifters do a lot of front squats a lot power lifters yeah. don't do a lot of front squats they do some but they don't do a lot yeah and so using that as an example i'd say i mean the front squat is very very valuable and i think in my opinion uh, it should make its way into your routine pretty regularly maybe not as regularly as a back squat but pretty regularly i think it should be there next question is from stewart 75002 we know priming is superior for getting ready for a training session but do you see any benefits to static stretching if so, how would you apply it? Okay, so static stretching is the old school way of stretching where you, you take a muscle, you put it in a stretch, and you hold it there for a mm -hmm. while. And then what you notice is as you're holding it, it starts to loosen up and you get more, uh, more range of motion. Here's what's happening when you static stretch, and this will kind of explain uh, my opinion or our opinion on this, right? When you're doing a static stretch... You're, as you're holding the stretch, the central nervous system starts to receive the signal. And initially, the central nervous system is like, protect the muscle, keep it tight. And so you've, you're tight. So you're stretching your hamstrings, you're holding it, it's really, really tight. And then the CNS says, wait a minute, I think we're okay. Let's loosen up a little bit. And it starts to dampen its signal, and you start to get more of a range of motion. So the muscle isn't actually becoming uh, more pliable like a piece of rubber. It's just the central nervous system is relaxing its signal. Mm. Now, the problem with this is when I'm going into a workout, what I don't want usually 
there are cases where I where I might want this, but for the most part, I don't want my central nervous system to have a weaker signal because what that does is actually makes me less stable and mm -hmm. can cause more injury. Studies actually support this now. There's studies that show that static stretching before workouts increases risk of injury. In fact, I remember when those studies first came yeah. out and everybody's mind was, was totally blown. Now, to answer the question of is there value in static stretching before you work out, in some cases there is. If I want a muscle to get out of the way, I'll do it. So to give you an example, let's say I'm working with a client and – they have such bad forward shoulder and and their chest is just their chest and shoulders are so tight mm. that I'm trying to get them to do a row and pull their shoulder blades back and squeeze their shoulder. But they're so tight in the front that it's getting in the way. In mm. that case, I may static stretch the chest and the shoulders to weaken the signal to them so that I can get them to pinch and pull the shoulder blades back more. Mm -hmm. But it's it's very specific way to, to, to apply. You don't want to just static stretch your body and go work out because uh, you'll make yourself more unstable. Yeah, because of that study, and and I had the same kind of response. Like, well, uh, it makes perfect sense. Like, it, I've I've basically kind of taken all of my emphasis on static stretching towards the end of the workout. So, in, anytime I'm more in a parasympathetic type of a state versus sympathetic, so uh, where I need because through the workout you're going to need to be able to brace, be tight, and, you know, on command. And uh, for the end of the workout where I'm trying to really now recuperate, I'm trying to, to, to start that process of, of recovery. I think it's very beneficial for that, especially in areas where you found sticking points and you found restrictions in terms of, of gaining access to certain ranges of motion. Like I'm going to hone in on those areas and I'm going to take my time, nice, like slow, deep breaths, get my heart rate down. Uh, and, you know, and hold those positions into a relaxed state. So that's really where I find the most value for him now. Yeah, I have to agree with you, and I and I and I would challenge uh, what Sal's saying a little bit, just because I used to do the same thing. Like for example, like a common one for me to static stretch before like squatting would be like my hip flexors, because my hip flexors would get in the way, right? My hip flexors were tight, shortened, right, and I'd be pulling me forward when I get into a squat. Um, I don't need them to be super active to to fire when I'm squatting. So I want to get them out of the way so I could squat better. And I do think that it actually works. But what I have found is you can do priming exercises or mobility drills to accomplish that same thing. Better. That it, better. Yeah, I agree. So, you know, not that static stretching it, you, it can't be useful for certain things. There, even where it is applicable, like what Sal said, and what I just gave as an example, I still think that there are, are mobility drills or you know, quote unquote, priming drills that you can do that are superior to that anyway. So, yeah, I, I'm with you, Justin. I think that for the most part, it belongs post workout or throughout your week, right? When I'm, you know, the next day after I had like a hard training session and yeah. I'm I'm static stretching my piriformis or my hip flexors or something like that. Um, that's where I see the most value. Static stretching is relaxing. Yeah, it's very relaxing. Um, you know, you might not want to do priming session right before you go to bed, right? Because yeah. it might be it might stimulate you and it's hard to you. sleep, right? Yeah. Static stretching before bed, where you're breathing. By the way, if you want to make your static stretching effective, remember what you're trying to tell your central nervous system to do. So I, I, I you know, for my my wife, uh, for a while she traveled with uh, Cirque du Soleil. This was her, her previous life, right before she met me and we and you know I made her boring or whatever. <laughs> she can't do any of this anymore. But she used to travel with the circus and work for them, and she learned how to get really extreme ranges of motion from uh, some of these acrobats and athletes. And so they did. These were Russian athletes, and they did some intense like static stretching, right, oh, yeah. on, on top of a lot of other stuff. And she's and she, so I would stretch with her sometimes at night, and she's like, "You're holding your breath, like your CNS is not going to relax because you're telling your CNS to stay tight." She's like, "When you do static stretching, yep. you need to relax your body and breathe because it's also mm -hmm. receiving that signal that it needs to protect." So the whole process of static st stretching, if you're doing that as part of your protocol, let's say you want to really increase, because it okay for increasing range of motion, it's the best. Mm -hmm. It's not going to give you functional you flexibility. Focus on the exhale for yeah, that. You got to. Yeah, you have to totally relax your body and, and put your body in that parasympathetic state. So post-workout is excellent. Before bed, yeah. it's great. Like if you are tight or anxious before bed or, or you know whatever, get into these static stretches. Breathe your way through, even though it hurts. Tell your body it's okay to chill out. It's okay to relax. And, and it's, it's great. You'll sleep incredible from, uh, you know, from doing this. Look, if you like our information, you'll love our guides. We have tons of free guides and books available for all of our listeners and viewers, head over to mindpumpfree.com. 
Download all of them. They're amazing. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Everything you do as a trainer is selling. Now, you might not be selling for money always. You might not be selling products always or even services always, but you're constantly selling ideas. In fact, here you are talking to Mrs. Johnson, who has never exercised consistently.